This is a story of a car company, but not just any company. This company built some pretty over-the-top rides. The company is called GMMG, and the cars are, well, pretty amazing. takes the best that Detroit has to offer and raises it to a level that pushes all your buttons. Well, I started a company back in 1999, around 2000, which we called GMMG Incorporated. Um, and my goal with the company was to work with Chevrolet dealers around the country to really create the performance image of these vehicles in a modern day uh, supercar. Well, we've worked with some of the super dealers that were around back then. Berger Chevrolet, which has been in business for 78 years, was one of the premier high performance dealers in the 60s, and they're still selling cars out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And now I just, I can't believe it, here it is 32 years later, a whole new era of Berger Chevrolet, not only am I working for the dealership, but I'm out getting to experience these cars that that once again just proved Berger Chevrolet is number one in power. What we tried to do was help the dealers through emission certification testing, working with GM on warranty issues and quality issues, uh, validation issues. We tried to create a modern day supercar that a customer can go again back to the dealership like they did in the 60s and early 70s. GMMG has built specialty vehicles for General Motors and some very unique car shows. They've also designed and built cars for many big name performance dealerships all over the United States. Just like the muscle car era working in partnership with GM and dealers like Berger Chevrolet, GMMG has resurrected the concept of the performance dealership where high performance car lovers can have something extra special without losing important elements like a factory warranty and all the services that a dealer provides. I have talked to uh, Matt Murphy and uh, he started his own business down there and uh, documented these cars, took pictures as they came off the car carriers and uh, put a, a real personal touch on the cars. Lately we've been able to work with Chevrolet Motorsports and engineering as well as the brand team to put together some pretty special horsepower packages based off the LS1 motor and uh, still keeping them 100% uh, emission legal uh, with recertified emission tests that we've done on the cars. Driving it is uh, like a rocket. It's, it's a missile from, from the time you hit the pedal, it just flies. And just like the good old days, most of these factory hot rods are based on Chevrolet's perfect little race car, the Camaro. Now some people might not recognize what a great car the Chevrolet Camaro is, so before we go any further, it's time for a little lesson in Camaro history. This is the year of the Camaro. Chevrolet introduced the Camaro in 1967 to go up against the Mustang. I like to say that everybody's got a Camaro in their past. They didn't have one, their brother had one, their sister had one, their favorite aunt, their favorite teacher, the kid down the block, but everybody's got a Camaro in their past. There are three things that the Camaro's always shared as the brand promise, and that is head-turning style, uh, incredible straight-line performance, and then of course that incredible road handling that has always been a hallmark of Camaro. In fact, it was called the Hugger. Camaros were winners across the board, from the mighty Super Sport 396s to the Lightning Creek Z28s. <laughs> but Chevy really dropped the ultimate weapon on everyone with this car, the Copo ZL1. Well, the original ZL1 concept came out in 1969, and in order to get that project through, they ran it through what they called their Copo department, which was the fleet vehicle department, which was mainly your school bus, taxi cab, police cars, 
And then the high performance man at Chevrolet, which was Vince Piggins, was able to figure out a way to run these cars through that department to keep them under the radar so the GM brass wouldn't see them. And what they did really was they took a fleet vehicle and they put the, at the time, the Z28 had the cow induction hood and the, cow, and the rear spoiler on it. They put those pieces on a basic police car or a fleet car and came out with a bare bones stripped down race car with an all aluminum 427 cubic inch basically race motor. It was overkill in a plain brown wrapper. The only way you could get one of these cars is direct from the factory through your local Chevy dealer. It was a special order piece all the way. What made the Copo cars the bad, nastiest cars on the streets back in the 60s was no accident. It was a careful blending of the best performing and the most heavy duty parts that Chevrolet had. It was a surefire formula for success on the street and the strip. There's a lot of power in the pedal and, and you know it's there, you can feel it. Uh, the burnouts is, is fun part of any of it, heating the tires up and uh, uh, it's first, second, third, and you know, 110 mile an hour, and you see the traps, and you're shutting her down, and going and get your time slip. Copo was a great idea, but it didn't survive the gas crunch of the 70s. But thanks to a couple of decades of high-tech engineering, and the high-performance heartbeat that still thumps inside General Motors, cars like those original special order Copo machines are possible again. All it took was a company like GMMG, to make it happen. We wanted to do something special, and we worked with Chevrolet for about two and a half years on this project right here. GMMG built supercars by combining the best Chevrolet has to offer in one sweet package after another. And their track record is pretty awesome. The Blackbird Pontiac Trans Am offered through Carl Black Pontiac. The Intimidator Camaros, which you could only buy through Dale Earnhardt Chevrolet. The Berger 75th Anniversary Camaros. Specially designed super sport Camaros for Tom Henry Racing, Hot Rod Magazine, and even Chevrolet Motor Division. The totally radical ZL1 Camaro. New muscle for a new millennium. All were designed right here at GMMG in partnership with Chevrolet. Instead of using aftermarket, performance engine pieces, we just take a GM LS6 crate motor and recertify that in the car. Then instead of using aftermarket brakes, we'll take the Corvette Z06 brakes, rotors, calipers, you know, and put them on the car. Instead of using aftermarket suspension pieces, we take the 1LE suspension package that GM created for the Camaro. So we take the best that GM has, build the car, sell it to the dealership, and again, it's basically a car you bought from your Chevrolet dealership with your Chevrolet parts and pieces on it. And now, GMMG has created a tribute to one of the most famous people in Chevrolet history, Dick Harrell. In this particular project, we also brought a, a name from the past, and that name was Dick Harrell. Dick owned a high performance center back in the late 60s, early 70s, and he would do dealer conversion cars, primarily Camaros, where he would install 427 race motors into a street car. And today, we're doing this project with Berger Chevrolet and Dick's daughter, Valerie Harrell, uh, to really do a tribute to her dad. Great brakes and road racing suspension systems are vital parts of today's supercars. And the Dick Harrell Camaro has the best you can get. But the centerpiece of this awesome mobile is the strongest Chevrolet engine in three decades. I'm telling you, the engineers that have done the work on this engine left nothing on the table on this package. Got durability dynamometer tests that we run on them. We'd, we'd blow up those old engines compared to what we do with engines today. Um, they use a six bolt main in this block, um, four vertical, two horizontal. Um, the cranks are basically indestructible. They've been seen to take upwards of a thousand horsepower. They use a powder metal rod, which is also very, almost bulletproof. The only thing that I'll go on those is a rod bolt, and that's an extreme high RPM power applications. Lightweight pistons um, combined with basically greatest cylinder heads out there. Uh, 
produce killer power. Average guy on the street can get one of these cars, spend anywhere from five to $10,000 on it, make over 500 horsepower, and drive his car to work to and from every day, and go to the drag strip on 11 or even 10 second quarter miles, um, while maintaining uh, perfect uh, fuel economy. Uh, it's definitely the way to go, bang for the buck, if you want to go fast and get to work, uh, get an LS1. Now I'm a, a, a muscle car fan like a lot of other folks out there, and I love those old cars, but when it comes time to durability and performance, let's be realistic, today's cars significantly outperform those cars. So, is GMMG's Dick Harrell Camaro just a show car or an overpowered temperamental plaything? Or is it a real car? We had three people that went on the power tour last year and got estimated 24 miles per gallon with 600 horsepower with the air conditioning and leather interior and a CD player. And What really amazes you is you can take those cars, beat them to death around a racetrack for as long as you want to, bring them back on pit row, hop out of them, leave them idling with the air conditioning on, and go get another one. And how many muscle cars would sit there without puking their coolant or you know, fouling the plugs or you, know, you name it? I mean, that's, that's the difference in today's cars. My goal with the company was to work with Chevrolet dealers around the country to really create the performance image of these vehicles in a modern day uh, supercar. GMMG is not a huge assembly line industry, but a group of dedicated car builders with a gift for taking the best and making it a whole lot better.